Hello guys, and welcome back to another video. Um, this is Last Minute Laura, and I'm Laura. Today I, um, <laughs> Alex was getting ready for work and then walked into the bedroom, um, with his shirt on and he had a big rip on the arm and he said, I just did this when I was putting it on. I have no idea how, how that could have happened because like, look at, it's not on a seam. But anyway, I told him I would fix it, so leave it behind and I'll, I'll do something to it. Because he wants um, it to be visible, like he doesn't want it to look fixed. He wants like a design or something on it. He likes that right now. So I'm down for it because it was either that or this was not going to be fixable anyway. So um, yeah, and then I logged into my YouTube account this morning and I saw a comment, which is really weird because it was a comment saying, could you do more mending videos? And I have to fix this today anyway. So I figured, you know, anyway, so I thought might as well because I have to do it anyway. So I'll just film it because I already had the camera set up because I'm working on a shawl um, crochet thing. So I already had to do that anyway. So I'm going to mend this little guy and I'm going to show you how to do it. I just did the first step. <laughs> without um, explaining it because it was pretty self-explanatory if you saw what I did. Uh, but I will just tell you what I did anyway. Um, basically, I'm using a little embroidery hoop. I like to use an embroidery hoop when I'm doing any mending on clothing just because it keeps that other side of the sleeve away from what you're working on. So you're not gonna accidentally sew the sleeve together. Um, it also pulls your stitches nice and tight so that you can line them back up. Like I can see that he actually lost some of the the thread in between. Like that's not a clean cut. I can't sew it right together. I'm going to um, see if I need to add a patch, but okay. <clears throat> so you can see this damaged portion trying to make it like perfectly flat. There we go. Then I'm just gonna take a, a hand sewing needle and just sort of, cause it's been pulled. So it's not like where it would usually lay. It's kind of had tension on it since it broke. Excuse my voice. Um, so I just wanna kind of pull it back into place to see how damaged it actually is. Like, see, that's not gonna be super easy to just hide with stitches um, because the stitches are gonna have to cross over. So I'm either gonna have to do something where I'm doing a little bit of weaving, which I think I will do actually. Um, it was either that or I have to add a little patch. And I mean, I could, I have quite a few so I'm just getting, oh wait, what you'll need for this, um, if you're also wanting to mend something, duh, this is a tutorial, not just me mending. Okay, excuse me. What you'll need for this is an embroidery hoop. They're super cheap if you get the wood ones like this. Like I think this one was like 79 cents Canadian at, um, I went to Lens Mill store I think for these ones, but there's lots of stores to sell them. Michaels, they might be a little bit more like two or three dollars. I know Walmart has them too. And of course you can get them on like Amazon or on any of those websites, whatever. So an embroidery hoop, um, a really good pair of sharp scissors. These are like a little extra, I know they're heavy duty, but um, they're my sharp ones. So um, I like to use them for my embroidery. The next thing you're going to need is some embroidery floss. I've got my little collection here. Um, it's like 50% hand-me-downs from my grandma. When she passed away, um, my grandpa gave me her embroidery floss. And so like 50% of my collection is that. And then over time, I've been just accumulating and accumulating because there's so many nice colors now. But then sometimes I go back and I just see like, I don't know, look. DMC 368, she like labeled them. I don't know, it's kind of a neat feeling. And like, there's still a needle through this one. So like it was a color that she was like actively using. It's kind of a, it's a weird, nice connection. And like seeing one, <clears throat> ones like this, ones that aren't DMC, they're like knockoffs from like, I don't even know when 
but it's like, can you see it? At the bottom it says, similar to DMC's 699. And right next to it is my grandma's handwriting and it says DMC 699. So it's just, I don't know, it's kind of neat. So I really like doing things to our clothes with my um, embroidery stuff just because it's like, it's a connection, it's, uh, it's kind of cool. Okay, so now back to the mending. We are putting an embroidery hoop around that sleeve and I've opened up the shirt so that I can just get in here. Also, I have my tea. Mm. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll that sleeve a little just to make it super easy for me to get into that sleeve because that's like the most annoying part about embroidery is like your needles going up and down. Okay, now what are we going to do? Um, okay. All right, so we're back at the beginning. Um, I'm gonna put a patch behind it. I found this little bit of fabric in my stash, my quilting stash. So I think I'm gonna do gonna do the mend with the fabric fully behind. I'm gonna make it so that little uh, hummingbird is right in the hole. So that if the hole can't be totally fixed, it'll be okay, it'll look super cute. I kind of almost wanna make that a, an on purpose thing. Like a little tiny hole here, a little window. It would be neater. Let's do it. This is definitely not a tutorial anymore though. Now it's just, what will Laura do with Alex's clothes? Also, this uh, video is likely to be much quicker to edit than the ones I've been working on, so I will give you a little background on a couple of videos I just finished that are super exciting and they're coming pretty soon. Um, they just take a little bit longer to edit because they're a bit bigger of a project. So I'm working on editing now this sweater that I made. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it, so just ignore this part, I guess. But basically, um, I made a super cute pullover out of this super squishy wool and it's a cute thing and I filmed it. So if you saw it on Instagram, um, that sweater is going to be a tutorial or a make along. Maybe we'll call it a make along because I don't know that I actually taught it. Haven't gone through the footage yet, so we'll see how it went. Just big enough to show our little guy. There we go. There. See? That'll be super cute. And then I'll just stitch around it. That looks a love it. So there we go. That got a little bit difficult for me to wiggle through. It's not actually hard. It's just hard to do it when you're um, trying to keep a camera on it, you know? Sorry about the complaining. Ugh, jeez Louise. Just one sec. All right, so that took a little bit of negotiating, but I got it on. I have a little bit of a trouble spot because of that... Um, sleeve uh, button detail placket thing. So I'm gonna just give myself a little bit of extra, geez, what a dull pin, security. There we go. There, and I think I'll do one other spot. I think I need new pins. Or like a pin sharpener, is that a thing? Okay, that one's fine. Okay, cool. 
So now that box is more or less square. We can kind of fix that as we go along. What I'm gonna do now is take that lavender thread again, still coming up through the bottom, but this time I'll be coming up through two um, pieces of fabric. And I'm gonna come pick anywhere on your um, item that is not part of your seam. So like far enough back that fraying is not gonna separate the two. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do first just a super basic whip stitch, whip stitch, straight stitch. Yeah, straight stitch. We're just gonna stitch right around the patch as close and as like pretty as you can make it. Again, I'm leaving like a one or two inch tail probably um, just to tie off again at the end. Okay, so I just made my way around. Um, just doing the last couple of stitches. This one is not super important. It's just kind of to establish a little connection between the, um, the fabric and the patch fabric. I'm actually gonna switch hoop sizes. I'm having a bit of difficulty with this um, small size. So if you need a bigger or smaller hoop, size as needed, if you have more than one, I guess. Okay, and now I'm gonna be gentle because there's that patch, but now it's stitched in, so it's a little bit um, more secure when I'm putting the hoop on. There we go. And since those stitches are already there, it kind of already established the tension between the fabrics. So it makes it a little bit easier to position the shirt, I think. Okay, there we go. So that's a little better. Nice and tight, nice and flat. Um, and then I still have the purple in there. What I'm just going to do with this sleeve, though, is get it completely out of the way. I'm just going to roll it really little. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, still in the purple, I'm going to go around this raw edge with a blanket stitch through both layers, just to kind of um, secure off that edge so it won't fray. And then after that, we'll kind of do a little bit of sash sashiko style sort of jazzing it up just to make it look a little more not professional that's not the right word but you know what I'm saying okay so I'm gonna do that stitch by first coming up through the bottom and then I'm gonna put the stitch back down along the edge so along that raw edge I'm coming up close to these stitches and then I'm coming uh, back down right into that edge there and then I'm gonna bring that back down I'm not gonna pull it all the way though because the next stitch that I come up which will be pretty close next to that first one I'm gonna loop that loop over and that's how you start that blanket edge stitch. So now you can see, I hope you can see, geez louise, Let's see if it'll focus. So now you can see there's the little horizontal line and the little vertical line. Now we're gonna go back down again, just a little bit higher. but I'm not gonna pull the whole loop forward because I'm gonna go back up just a little bit like that. 
there. So I'm gonna just do that all the way around and see how that looks. Okay, so I'm just making my way now along that final edge. And you can see I got a little bit sloppier as I was going because I um, realized this is not going to be um, super duper visible, I don't think, in the final thing. Because I changed my mind again. And subtlety is over. This is now a straight up patch. So now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull that thread through. And luckily it was where my beginning thread is. So now I didn't tie off that first thread and I didn't tie off the um, other threads I've pulled in. So what I can do is just snip them so they're all around the same length and then tie them together. Perfect. Trim that, trim that, there we go. So now we've got the basic patch. I mean, I could kind of finish it there, but I'm not gonna, cause I'm feeling like I wanna make it a little bit jazzier. Um, so I'm going to actually switch to something light blue if I can find it in my stash. Do I have nothing pale blue? Mm, not the right blue. How about that blue? Maybe if I do just two strands, or I could do one strand lavender, one strand blue, that might be pretty. Let's do it. Okay, so I just um, separated my threads into uh, two strands of the purple and two strands of that pretty little blue. I am limited on the amount of blue I have, so that might not have been a great idea, but we'll see how it goes. Um, now what I'm thinking, I'm just going to search to see what I should do. Sashiko embroidery. Okay, so I'm thinking of doing just like super basic um, men's shirt. Let's see what they recommend. They, the Pinterest people. Ooh, that's cute. I like that along the edge of the neck. So it's literally uh, anything goes. Cool then, I guess there's no, so my vibe. Okay, there's nothing major then. Okay, so if it's hanging down this way, I could do just straight lines, but I kinda now I'm thinking I wanna do something cool. Sorry if the pencil's not super clear. Um. Okay, so I'm almost done. I'm gonna do, I think, two more lines in this space. Um, so I'm just coming up with a new 
piece. It looks like I'm going to have exactly what I need, which is perfect. Again, I'm leaving a nice tail for tying. And then I'm just going to keep going with that straight running stitch for those last little areas. I'm into it. I think Alex will like it too. Almost done. I'm just coming on my last, um, I'm doing little semicircles now I'm not going all the way around. Um, but I'm coming on my last one where I'm just crossing over the um, patch one more time. And that should just keep it nice and secure for, you know, at least until Alex damages it further and needs to um, have a different hole patched. Like this will last at least until the next repair is needed on some other part of the shirt. Alex and I are kind of going through a time where we're making more of a conscious effort to try and fix our stuff rather than just throw it out. Um, I would say it's mostly me uh, because I'm the one doing the mending rather than throwing stuff out, but Alex is super supportive of it and he kind of thinks of it more as an art piece than a, like a conservative nature piece or whatever, like an eco-friendly thing. He doesn't see it so much that way. Not that he doesn't see it, of course he thinks it's important, but I mean like he likes that I'm mending stuff not because of the environmental idea of it but more because he likes what it looks like and I mean like for example with Alex this dress shirt he had it for maybe four or five years before this happened to it this rip that he gave to it this morning so I mean like Alex is already really good to his things I don't know what I'm talking about I'm just saying I'm happy he likes it because I like it all right, where was that first piece? Is it on this side? Oh good, it's on this side. So I'll just go down a little farther, push down through, and then I'll tie my knot there. Perfect. So I do have enough to go around probably a whole other time, but I kind of like this gap in the middle, this gap here, and then the circle. I think it kind of looks kind of cool. Um, okay, so that's where I'm going to cut it or finish the embroidery portion anyway. There we go. Perfect. Then I'll just trim it and it's almost complete. The only thing left, I'm going to pull the pins. I put some pins in the sleeve to, to roll it up, pull those out. And then I put a couple of pins in the body side to keep it out of my way. Now I'm gonna just undo that embroidery hoop. And then the next step is to turn your sleeve inside out or wherever you're, um, whatever you were mending, and then trim around the patch. So if I knew where my zigzag scissors were, I'd probably zigzag cut this, but I don't know where they are. So I'm just gonna cut it like that. There we go. That's done. And then all my edges are tied off and secure so I can turn it back the right side and there we go now we have this cute little patch let me zoom you out okay so let me just move some stuff out of the way just so I can put that sleeve on Do those 
buttons. Oh, I cut myself. On what? Oh, I snipped right into my finger. Jeez, with the scissors. Okay, well. Looks like it's already stopped bleeding, so we're good. Okay, hold on, let me just... Why am I doing it up on? Okay. Okay, so basically, that is our finest final patch. Shoulders up here. So the patch is on the back side of the arm. And you can see it now. It's got those super cute, the super cute circular stitches. But once I wash this out, it'll uh, wear in a little bit. But basically it's the back of the arm, good tattoo spot. And um, that's it, that's how I mend things. So, I mean, it's not really a tutorial because I started out saying it was gonna be subtle and then it turned into definitely not subtle, but the patch is about as thick as the rest of the shirt. It just feels like stitching. You can't really feel the difference between these two. It's just sort of like, you could feel the embroidery stitches. Um, and I think by putting it in a circle, it makes it look more like an art arty patch rather than looking super mended. And now you can see that that purple we used at the beginning just to secure the patch to the shirt did kind of disappear. You can't really see it in the final thing. Like if I put this way back here and zoom you out, even if I make it clear, it's just the circles that you really see mostly. Anyway, that's it. I hope you liked it. And uh, if you did, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're not already, subscribe because I have been putting out a lot more videos than I used to and um, you can watch them. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.